So you know that Super Seminar 004 is coming up this Wednesday, December 6th, where we do a deep dive into how degenerative AI is being used in the enterprise. I also want to let you know that Super Seminar 005 will take place on the following Wednesday, December 13th, and you can get both passes for 50% off if you get the Super Seminar Max Pack. Just head over to superseminar.school to grab your pass. I can announce that generative AI architect Hassan Ragab will be one of our feature presenters in Super Seminar 005. Hassan's speculative architecture work is truly at the vanguard, pushing our understanding as to what architecture can become as a practice and as a profession that, you know, does more than make parking lots and bad ski town condos. Hassan is helping us sense into possible futures through speculative design, generative AI, and architecture. As Hassan puts it, generative AI is bringing architecture back to art. I have a few minutes with Hassan to get a bit of a sneak peek into his current practice, which has evolved from architecture and construction to something beautiful and at the vanguard of becoming something new as he has fully embraced the complex and sublime of generative AI. Have a listen. I think like AI tool, the, the, these tools are helping me challenge the status quo of architecture. I was a little bit skeptical about like the current scene of architecture, where it's heading. I didn't like the practice very much. I don't think it is, it's centered around the human being. It's actually centered around human beings as a resource. And that actually made me wonder about like where this is heading. It made me wonder about what did I study in school? So for me, AI was like a fresh, like a, fr like a fresh start, like just like an empty paper where you can actually start or canvas, basically it's a canvas that you can actually now go and explore new ideas and new meaning without the constraints of your boss or like your teacher trying to tell you, Hey, you can build that in real life. You can think like that, or you can't make, you can't deliver that large, or you can make a building that's made out of fabrics. That doesn't make sense, or that won't be helpful. What's the point in that? And for me, there's a very, very valuable point in using AI in architecture at that point, at least generative AI in architecture that is trying to bring architecture back to art rather than it being a financial engineered uh, practice. So that's actually why, that's how I'm using AI. So basically I'm using AI to understand architecture through art not actually to bring AI into the architectural practice. What would it take to build a building with value? That's why, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out with using AI in architecture. Probably like in this century, like in the past century, there are probably less than a hundred architects who were able to really build something that kind of reflects their ideologies. And there will be like a thousand or like thousands of architects who were really great architects, but they were forced like, or like they are just doing what the client wants. So that's not th something that they want to do. And the rest of like the millions of architects and creatives that have lived over the past century, they were just slaves to the status quo of like, yeah, we need to get this done because there is something that needs to be done. And the problem is not a lot of people just like sit down and think about it. Like, and what is and how what's happening what how ha, has happened before has influenced a life that we live in right now that's full, that's full of actually a lot of problems and it's, it's for the entire world so architecture i mean I, I believe that architecture is a big part of why a lot of people are depressed and a lot of people are anxious and a lot of people are you know are frustrated because they live in confined spaces that doesn't serve them very well and they live slave they are slaves for that exactly they have to do they have to work in jobs that they don't like to pay for this house that they don't like because they are resources and architecture is helping in that so if through humor or through absurdity of creating a building that can fly something that doesn't make sense but just like seeing something like that as an architect it just it might help you wonder about the possibility of an alternative of what you're actually doing. Because like building a building has a lot of impacts on economy, on nature, uh, on our ecosystem. It's it's just very in fact impactful. It's it's much easier to create a, a very a very bad work of art. You know, it won't hurt as many people as if you create a very bad building. And unfortunately, we're building millions of bad buildings every decade. And 
it's yeah i i just find that i i, I always i always keep thinking about that and it just like makes me not like architecture very much and most architects that i know like that are, whom are my age they don't like architecture mm. too they are frustrated and they're frustrated with what they're doing and they're frustrated with with everything so so yeah i think it's we need to really think about what we're doing and we need a, a fresh perspective on what it means to be to or what what architecture really means beyond the, the labels of like, hey, let's build a sustainable building right now. So what does sustainability mean? How the, can you define it? Or like build a building that's like, that kind of pulls up a certain function, but forgets about the people that are living there who are human beings. It all starts with being critical about what you're doing and being empathetic towards whom are you serving? That's what I'm trying to do. That's where I'm headed, like with like creating art that is inspired by these yeah. things. Yeah, it's beautiful. It makes it makes me think like uh, archigram keeps kind of resonating in my head. Like the beautifully fantastical, and at the edge of feasible, the evocative of something that is just in this kind of liminal dream space, almost in a way. Like things that when you're a child you dream of that. These kinds of you know, peculiar yeah. structures that have that are full of meaning, and mm -hmm. and at the same time you know you're able to ignore the practicality of it. You're able to say these things or draw them. You're allowed to say them out loud because people are like, that's beautiful. Look at the imagination of this child. Amazing. Amazing. They're going to yeah. go on to do great things someday. And at some point you can't say that anymore because you know, if you were in like a boardroom, you're pitching to a client, you're like, we're going to make your house walk. Oh my yeah. God, what's going on with this guy? Give me my check back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's also really beneficial for me, like using AI is actually adding this extra value to architecture that it's bringing a lot of elements outside of architecture into architecture. So it, it bring, it's basically bringing like photography or art. Sometimes if you're really good at it, you can bring emotions. So I'm really interested in that. I'm really interested in learning or like exploring things that are around the architecture, which basically sometimes like the people, like the conditions or the weather. I think these ideas can form or can help me, help me mm. understand and maybe be able to create a new vocabulary that kind of expresses architecture in a, in a just a different direction, in an interesting direction. So like Archigram, like you said, Archigram, there are people just like imagining things and like hoping for something that probably will never be built. But again, looking at their work, there is a big value of just like looking at the work and admiring it and just like, maybe it will change your mind about something. Maybe it will inspire you to create something that is more meaningful. Um, so, yeah. That's what, that's what I think it is. And that's what I, I mean, if I were to say just from my perspective, what your work does, um, you know, for, for me and, and possibly other people is, it's, um, it, it gets into your dreams, you know, in, in this way, it's like, it, it kind of, it, it takes you to another place. It's not just like looking at like, mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's a, you know, a mid-century modern house. It's like, you, you, it's yeah. almost like you're at some level you, you're asking or saying or offering what else? Exactly. Yeah. It's just like, just an alternative scenario. Maybe it's not a better one, but again, like, I don't like the one that we have right now. It's not, it's not helping the world. Like the architecture scene right now is not helping the world. So right now it's, it's, it's really, really important, in my opinion, for, I don't know, for me personally, uh, but I guess for everyone else to just like use these tools in a very, very meaningful way, in a very um, a selfless mm -hmm. way. Being inclusive, being open-minded, being, um, have like a, a like a, this critique mindset about what you create and what you see. Okay, so head over to superseminar.school and grab your pass for all three of our upcoming seminars in Generative AI. See you there this Wednesday, December 6th, and Wednesday, December 13th. I'm Julian, and I'm out. This Delta X plus decimal zero 07, Y is minus decimal zero 03.